the back. Okay, now let's look at some of the other interesting surface features on the sun. This, these ones are known as prominences. Prominences are eruptions on the sun's surface visible during a total solar eclipse. They usually, they loop back into the sun due to the sun's magnetic field. These ones are, I love these pictures, uh, so prominence pictures. See, these are actual prominences right here. And they drew here the earth just so that you can compare it, what the earth would look like if you put the earth next to it. You see that? Imagine if we were close to it. It'd like burn us up like nothing, you know. So these prominences go like that. A lot of times they loop back. You see a prominence is coming out of here, then it goes back in. There's one here you can't really see too well. You see the prominence is going out, curving back in, and then this is the earth just to compare it. So these things are huge. Let's see if there is. This is another view of that. I think this one you can see a little better. See here, prominence, earth for comparison. And then they're showing you the, how the prominence is taking place. Usually the prominence also starts from the sunspot and then goes to the sunspot. See, cooling gas trapped in magnetic field, and then this is the magnetic field. And then the gas starts rising, rising, rising like that. Isn't that cool like that? Wow. And then again, the earth for comparison. Spicules are another uh, set of features on the sun's surface. They are small jets of gas projected from the surface. They, they are the uh, feature on the sun that lasts the shortest. It doesn't last that long. It's just a projection of gas and then it ends. Okay? Kind of like if you open the flame on the oven and then turn it off. <laughs> and then turn, you turn it off like that. They look like spiked hair. And the features of the spicules, they look like if you had a spiked hair, the gas is ejected like that. You see here? This is taken from a very, very up, you know, very, very strong up close telescope, taking a picture, multiplying it many hundreds of times. You see these projections of gas? Very, very good picture, actually, amazing. Spicules, if we zoom in on that, let's see. So you could even see more detail of that. We are the first generation that could see the sun like that. Amazing. No, genera no generation before us have, has ever seen that kind of detail. Granulation. Granules are modeled structures on the photosphere which resemble a web of honeycombs. They are caused by the continual uprising and sinking of hot gas. Basically, what I compare granulation to is like the skin of our um, face, you know. When you look at our face from very far, our face might look very smooth and, you know, nice. And when you look very up close, especially if you hold a magnifying <laughs> lens and, or a mirror, you know, you see there are surfaces surface features on your skin that are like, they're very grainy, you know. Uh, the sun is similar too. From the outside, it looks very smooth. When you get close, there's activity taking place there. You see here? These are the granules. You see, from very far, you wouldn't be able to see all this activity taking place. It would look very smooth to you. You see, like that. But there's all these see the white spots and then the darker spots? Let's see what's happening in the white and what's happening in the darker spots. There's this picture will show you. You see the white spots, the, the, the lighter colored spots, and then the darker spots. If we zoom in on that, this is what we believe is happening. You see, the, wide, the wider spots are, is where the gas is rising. And then you see the dark spots that form the boundary is where the gas is sinking. 
very much like the belt and zone regions on Jupiter. Remember the belts were dark and they represented sinking gas and then the zones were regions of lower pressure uh, rising gas, right? So very, very similar. The dark part here, the gas is sinking the, and then, the, then there's convection happening. The wider the part, the lighter colored, the convection is rising, sinking, rising, sinking, rising, like that. Okay? Cool. So if you compare things to each other, a lot of times you might see analogy. Uh, Jupiter belt and zone region, and then a granulation on the sun. Because it's the same physics principle that is governing all of this. Everything is basically physics and uh, chemistry and all the, uh, the science laws, you know, that are taking place. Where the gas is rising forms the center of the granules, which is light colored, and where it is sinking forms the edges where it is dark colored. Solar flares, this is the most dangerous and the most eruptive activity on the sun. There are violent eruptions on the sun's surface and can lead to coronal mass ejections. What is that? Well, that means it can be so strong that the sun can eject a part of its mass, a very small little part of its mass. It can eject it. That's how much gas it ejects. If this thing is headed our way, be careful. Satellites might be damaged, okay? Uh, maybe during the course of several months, you have to be even more careful of going out in the sun, okay? Uh, so those, those are very, very, very strong ejections. They rise to maximum in, in minutes and decay in an hour. They occur in active regions where the oppositely directed magnetic fields meet and cancel each other. So one is coming this way, one is canceling, coming this way. The energy in, in, uh, in them is released, releasing the energy stored in them. They can send a burst of highly ionized charges to the earth, you remember the solar wind that we were talking about? But they can send so much strong solar wind that it will damage our navigation systems. It will damage electrical power lines, distort Earth's magnetic field, and disrupt navigation systems and satellites. We're, we're talking pretty serious stuff. They categorize uh, solar flares according to their power, too. There are some that aren't as powerful. There are some that are very, very, very powerful. So you see lots of stuff can happen. Uh, damage electrical power lines, distort its magnetic field, disrupt navigation systems and satellites. If, this, if you like this topic, you can also research on this topic. Uh, what kind of solar flares have happened in the past? When is the recent one? Can we do anything about it? If we know something is coming, what kind of protection can we do? When is the next one going to happen? Can we predict it? So that would be a good research to do. This is the solar flare picture. 